Our county board proceedings will now come to order. Uh, push your attend buttons. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Supervisor Locke with the invocation. <coughs> We come to you tonight asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussions, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of our communities. Amen. Amen. Supervisor Robel. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move. Uh, tonight for the uh, agenda, the uh, corrected uh, agenda. Been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this evening? Now is your chance to talk. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this evening? Okay, that portion of the meeting will be closed. Communications and petitions from the clerk. Uh, we have a notice of claim from Greg Anderson for damage to his vehicle on uh, Highway 41, referred to personnel and finance. A notice of claim from Crail Camp Trucking for damage to a tarp and pole on one of their trucks at the landfill, referred to personnel and finance. A petition for zoning amendment from Robert Wolf in the town of Winnicani, requesting a zoning change from R1 to A2 for single family residents, referred to planning and zoning. That's all. Okay, thank you. Reports from committees, commissions, and boards. Supervisor Wingman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a notice that the January 26th meeting of the Legislative Committee will be is canceled. There will not be a meeting on the 26th due to a lack of items on the agenda. We will, however, meet on February 23rd. So the next meeting of the Legislative Committee will be Monday, February 23rd. Thank you. Supervisor Eisen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to report on the uh, annual meeting of the Brown Outagamie Winnebago County Partnership uh, at the uh, Recycling Center in Outagamie County. Uh, on January 14th, uh, the annual meeting of the BOW uh, system uh, was held. Uh, Outagamie Landfill Operations Manager Bill Long shared that there is 8.7 years life expectancy for the Outagamie County Landfill Operation and that as more tonnage is directed to recycling, uh, life expectancy can be uh, stretched. Uh, the Materials uh, Recycling Facility Administrator, Jill Martin, shared that 100,000 tons of recycling was received in 2014. 14% 14 of that came from Winnebago County, 27% from Brown County, 24% from Outagamie County, and 35% from outside of the Bow uh, Partnership which included uh, uh, materials from Shano and Door County and as well as private haulers. Now of the 2,200,000 net retained earnings revenue that was distributed among the counties, Winnebago County received 21%, uh, Brown County 42%, and Outagamie County 37%. So uh, that's been a very profitable year. Uh, Brown County's future south landfill 
uh, which would take over after that 8.7 years of uh, uh, landfill filling in uh, Appleton, Brown County's future South Landfill Resource Recovery Park will uh, replace the Outagamie County landfill, uh, which is, and the uh, recovery park and Brown County South Landfill would be located on 1,500 acres in the town of Holland and will be sited on 385 acres. It's envisioned that private contractors will skim recyclable materials from the incoming waste stream. So I'm pleased to see the progress and the future of uh, recycling uh, in our county. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a few things that came out last week in the Parks Committee and other committee meetings about laying the parks. Um, question rose about one committee about the park tree planting program. Um, I asked Rob, and Rob reported back there have been 20 trees planted this past fall. There have been 14 trees purchased with the grants that he received, with 16 more to be purchased in April. And he's working with Mike Elder, Mike Elder on the tree inventory um, plan project. And his consultant is currently tabulating the inventory portion of the project, as well as they're working with Kim Miller from Extension. Uh, Supervisor Nancy Barker came to our meeting and asked Rob what was the status of the um, Extension storage building. And he reported back to me that he talked to Mike Elder. And the process of awarding the bid for the metal pole building is still going on. There may be a, a slight delay because of the funding situation, meaning I guess um, we have to wait till the 14-15 budget carryover process has to be approved, which may not be or probably won't be until March. And then after that, the contract for the company will be approved. So the project will not probably not be started until early May or, or June. And the last thing, um, last on Saturday, we had the 13th or 14th annual park user groups meeting um, with people who use the, both the parks and the Expo Center. It was a very amicable meeting. Um, Don Clemmer from the Parks Department stated that he was more than willing to work with any horseshoe group because different, every horseshoe group says their different um, specs or what, how they want the footing in the horse cover uh, arena. And also um, the, the idea of trying to get better um, signage for how to uh, locate and where the Expo Center and County Park is was also indicated. So that's my update on what the Park Committee from last week. Thank you. Supervisor Widener. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple items here. Um, and pardon me, I'm still having trouble speaking. But um, first on your desk, you should have a, a packet for the scholarship program. And uh, if you would take that, please. And if you know of any young men or young women that are seniors in uh, going to school and, uh, and get that to them so they can you know, have an opportunity to uh, apply. I think the, uh, the pack is pretty well self-evident, so I will not get into exactly how it does. We will be providing information to each of the schools in which might have uh, students from Winnebago County, which does include some schools outside of the county. And we will probably also send some information to the libraries within the county. So we're trying to get information out to everyone to get them to enter into the contest. And second item I have is the uh, Wisconsin Counties Association Steering Committee for Health and Human Services met last week. And one of the items we talked about was uh, bringing the 17-year-olds back into the juvenile correction system. They're presently in the uh, adult correctional system. Um, Wisconsin is one of only nine states that have 17-year-olds um, or younger in the adult system. And several uh, states in the past year or two have been moving away from that and have found, for example, Illinois, that the recidivism, boy, that's a hard one for me, recidivism is much less by as much as 35% when the young men and women are in the juvenile system and the cost of a juvenile crime goes down considerably. I think it's pretty self-evident what the impact is on a 17-year-old that gets involved with the adult system for what we might consider almost a prank or certainly not a very serious item. 
and the impact is that they can lose all kinds of information as far as education, scholarships, uh, jobs in the future. So it's really important that we get the, the juveniles back into this, the juvenile system. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think that, um, well, a couple of things. Um, there is legislation being introduced this year. They've had it in the last couple of years to get the juveniles or the 17-year-olds back into the juvenile system. Um, we've had some problems with that, and there are some details that had to be worked out, primarily the costs of the, such a system and who is going to pay for that. But it is anticipated that the, this information will be put together sometime this year, and that legislation will be put together and uh, hopefully will be passed this year. Um, one statistic that really blew my mind when they were going through this is that for every year that we do not change this system to get the 17-year-olds back in the juvenile system, 10,000, 10,000 uh, 17-year-olds end up in the adult system. And like I say, that just blew me away. But anyway, um, it would be planned that I will put together some kind of resolution for Winnebago County to support this system getting through the Human Services Board and the Legislative Committee if we meet sometime. So anyway, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Supervisor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everybody will notice that they have on their desk the proposed rules regarding uh, the electronic devices would be for usage, and one part is for the appropriate use of technology during board and committee meetings. And I would suggest everybody read through that. If they have any comments, I believe we'll be able to make those uh, comments or changes at the February 10th meeting. Is that, that's yeah. when we, okay. And so I just want people to take a look at it so that if they have their questions, they have them ready. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of the proceedings from December 16th board meeting. Also moved. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any f further additions or corrections? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. County Executive's report. There was one correction. Which one? On page 88, Paul Eisen had it. There is one correction. Uh, would you read it? Supervisor Eisen contacted me and, and brought to my attention that I had put the wrong vote on page 88 for resolution 104, so the ayes should be 35, nay 0, abstain 0, absent 1. So thank you, Supervisor Eisen. So and that's you, been corrected. And you made those corrections. Thank you. Go ahead. On page 88, the vote for resolution 104 should be corrected that the eyes were 35 instead of 33. Yep. I would like to point out that on your desk you should have a copy of the five-year capital plan. That's just a planning tool. It lists all the capital projects that are being suggested. Um, it does not give approval for those pr uh, projects. It simply is a planning tool for us. Each project has to be approved individually. Um, as the board reaches a vote on, on those items. I do have three items in tonight's agenda that I would <clears throat> urge approval. And I will point out that we, uh, I believe we only have 31 board members present tonight. And the items that are capital items require 27 votes to pass. So we'll need nearly everyone to vote for the capital expenditures if, if we want them to pass tonight. Uh, the first one is the resolution uh, 113, uh, which is to add additional parking spaces to Parkview Health Center. Uh, we find that many days, uh, just ordinary days sometimes, but all, especially on holidays or on days when there's some sort of event at Parkview for the residents, that they get more visitors than can be accommodated in the current uh, parking lot and I think we've always talked about expanding that parking lot when the site where the pavilion was demolished had a chance to settle 
And I think it's time to move forward with that. And, and remember, because we cater to a nursing home population that is even older than the average nursing home, a lot of people in their 90s, of course, that means that their children, when they come to visit them, are in their 60s and 70s. So uh, with the current situation on, on days when there's an event there or holidays or, or days when a lot of people come to visit, Many elderly people are having to walk quite a distance to get to the building. All of this parking lot expansion is for visitors to the nursing home. None of it is employee parking. And I would urge approval for that. Uh, there's also resolution 114, uh, which is to authorize an appropriation of 204,000 uh, for a project regarding the phone system for the 911 center. Um, this really is a necessity because the old system is, is losing support. And if we want the 911 center to function appropriately, we have to undergo this project for $204,000. And then the last item is just a small item, but the caulking of the jail has reached the end of its warranty and of its life. And there's gaps forming in the, in the jail building where, where caulking has shrunk or not held up. So that needs to be uh, recaulked. And the project, uh, the lowest bid we had on the project ran $52,000 higher than our estimate. So we're asking for that additional $52,000. It's another project that needs to be done because otherwise there'll be water infiltration into the building. And those are the ones I would recommend the board take very serious consideration of. And that's all I have tonight. Okay. Supervisor Olson. Thank you. Um, just a quick question, either uh, Mark or, or Chuck. Looking at these project, projected bonding, how do we determine what gets bonded and how much? County G bridge reconstruction, $560,000, $10,000 bond. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that that really can be discussed. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, but you, if you're asking a general question, when we do a project, how much the project is going to be bonded for? Yeah. Um, what determines that? I mean, why, why, is, why wasn't the whole thing bonded? And why is it only 10000 Well, I think most of the projects eventually are all bonded for, except for in the rare cases where we use reserves, which wouldn't be true of a highway project. I'm wondering if maybe that's split between two years. It is. And okay. one year's, yes. one we, year's we the engineering. We don't borrow the money until we need it. Okay. Yeah. That's so, why I wanted to know. So sometimes you have the engineering or some preliminary work in one year and the balance of the project in another. Okay. Thank you. Thank Supervisor you. Norton. Thank you. A general question on any of these capital projects. I think I know this, but to refresh me and the new members, any one of these projects, the Committee of Jurisdiction should bring them forward. Am I... Correct yes, the capital projects normally move through the committee of jurisdiction and P and F, and then to the board. And and generally, I'm consulted when they before they put the project in the five-year plan. I'm not giving it my blessing or approval, but I'm saying that it's. I'm not opposed to it being brought forward. And on the same token, if I'm reading it correctly, maybe something that's slated for 2017 and 18, that doesn't mean that, can't, that committee can't bring it up earlier. It's just a matter of if it's approved by the PNF and the board. Am I correct? That's the process. Y yes, and, and projects are frequently either moved up or moved back within the plan. Um, and part of that is we try and keep our debt service within a narrow range. And in some projects, we believe we have to eventually do them, but we're putting them off deliberately. And I'll give you an example of that with, uh, you know, oftentimes we talk about an addition to the jail, but while they've had alternatives to sentencing to the jail, we've been able to manage the jail population. So they've not moved forward with, with that project. But they've got it out in the five-year plan in case the jail population reaches a point that it would be required. Can I add one other thing? Both of the items, the capital projects that are on the agenda are both um, recommended that we use bonding to pay for them. The one for the 9-11 um, the telephone system, 
Uh, we basically have drawn the general fund balance down to our target level, so at this point we don't really recommend using any more of that. The one for Parkview potentially could come out of their fund balance, but we don't really know at this point what the budget is going to be like for 2016, so we hate to draw that at this point until we have a better idea. That's why those two are both recommended for, for bonding. Thank you. Right. You have some... <clears throat> Okay, on your on your board is uh, for the iPads that we'll be getting is a questionnaire that you should fill out and then put your name on it and hand it in to the clerk. They want to know if you have access to the internet at home, if you have a wireless internet access, different things like that. Fill it out and hand it in to the clerk. Uh, this Friday uh, will be the last day that Sue had to add in the paper. I have one qualified person that applied for Tim Hamlin's position already, but Friday is the deadline, so uh, Friday, Monday morning, we'll be making a decision on if somebody else uh, applies or not, but we have one qualified person now already. Uh, I also wanted to state that there's, uh, I have some forms, if somebody's interested to go to a legislative conference, it's on February th uh, 3rd and 4th in Madison. Uh, so if, if we got too many to go, we'll have to break it down to some to go some other time. But uh, I have the forms. There's two forms you have to fill out, and you're welcome to go. So come and get a form from me after the meeting, and you can go to that legislative exchange in Madison if you're interested. And Supervisor Ramos, Supervisor Kreischer, and Supervisor Finch have asked to be excused from tonight's meeting. I would like to have your uh, approval of Supervisor Haig being on the Facilities and Property Management Committee. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oppose? Carried. Uh, Supervisor Ken Olson on the Highway Committee. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. At this time, I'd like to ask Ernie Winters to come up. He's going to give us a presentation on what performance-based maintenance is in the county. Evening, everybody. I put a little outline on your desks this evening. It's a little bullet point outline that I'm going to walk you through. Um, this is a pretty big deal to the state highway departments. It changes kind of the, I guess, the relationship we've had with the state of Wisconsin for a number of years and how we do their state maintenance work. When David asked me to do this, I, it's kind of a complex subject. And I, I said I could either put together an hour and a half worth of PowerPoint presentation or do a 15 minute real brief summary. And he said, I have 15 minutes, so. <laughs> um, for over 80 years, the counties have been doing the state maintenance across the state. <coughs> Excuse me. And this was always done on a time and materials basis. Whatever was spent to do their work was paid to the counties. And I, I'm going out on a limb here, but I would guess that for just about as long, the State Transportation Builders Association, the folks like Northeast Asphalt, not picking on them, but the people who build roads, private companies, have been not entirely happy with that relationship. Um, back in 2010, the Transportation Finance and Policy Commission took a look at the DOT structure, their funding, their projects, how they do their work, and they came back with a number of recommendations that their maintenance program needed to be updated. Um, they did recommend that we stick with the current model of working with the counties, but that we review 
or we look at a more performance or unit cost or I guess competitive process to do that work. What they recommended was that the state statutes be changed so that we, the state and the counties could enter into more performance-based competitive projects. So the statutes got changed in the 2013-2015 budget bill to change the language to allow counties to work for the state on a contract or performance or unit cost private bidding sort of a format. So we implemented this last year. Um, there were a number of activities that were in this first year. It was crack filling, shoulder restoration, and bridge deck work. Um, the, the way that DOT sort of quantifies and tracks this, at least at this point, are through a level of service matrix or analytic and a compass rating. The level of service is picture an intersection that has long delays at certain times of the day. That would be functioning at a poor level of service, so it's a capacity and how, how it functions. Compass rating is the condition of the asphalt or condition of the facility. Along with these other statute changes, the state also needs to look at regionalization, which means one county possibly or one contractor would be hired to do um, maintenance on a particular stretch or a corridor like 41 across county borders. So we started this program last year. Um, typically, or for many years, we get our maintenance funding under what's called routine maintenance. So that includes snow plowing, um, tree and brush drainage, patrolling, pick and trash, fixing potholes, all the work we ordinarily do for the state, it's done under the routine maintenance scenario. Ordinarily, the last several years, we've been getting right around $3 million per year to do routine maintenance, and that's calculated on mileage, vehicle miles traveled, winter severity, and uh, the amount spent the last six years, they do an average. Um, statewide, routine maintenance was funded in 14 for about $122 million. And as part of this new PBM process, the new performance maintenance process, the state added $50 million into that $122 million um, on the basis of kind of a prearranged, there was an agreement between the counties and, or the County Highway Association, the state and the transportation builders. We all kind of agreed to do this. Um, I find it kind of ironic that they use the 50 million as sort of a sweetener to the counties when in fact it's their maintenance on their system that should have been getting done all along. Um, so last year there were over 400 candidate projects identified which got boiled down to about 108. 68 of the 72 counties participated, and about 104 of the projects were done. So it was a success. Um, we had to put bids together, which we did. Um, we used the state estimated quantities, and we put together our bids for labor, just like a contractor would for materials, for equipment and mobilization, traffic control, all those things. Every county got at least one project, we got five. We did quite well. Um, we had over $200,000 worth of work last year in this separate program. Um, some counties decided not to participate, but pretty much everybody did. Um, 14 was a success. DOT is now wanting to ramp this up coming into 15. Um, they're expanding the type of work that's going to be done to include chip sealing, which the state has done very little chip sealing over the years. Um, but they want to expand that and start doing that as a in-between maintenance process rather than full, full paving or overlays. Um, and then more bridge deck work. The, uh, the DOT is also looking at more regionalized maintenance, as they said they had to in the statute. We've been offered the opportunity to be a sign distribution county, which means we're going to accept signs from the sign provider and we're going to distribute those to our border counties. I believe there are nine or ten counties that got picked to do that work. Um, and we will be paid, and that, different from the PBM, that will be on a time and materials basis. 
So if we spend money to haul something somewhere, we'll get paid for that. Anti-icing is another thing that I know DOT has talked about looking at and applying brine or mag chloride on a regional basis by one county in particular, not just each county within each county's borders. We expect to see statewide about 100 contracts uh, this coming year, and we have two that have been selected. They're both quite large, and again, the value is going to be around $200,000, although I haven't bid those yet. Um, last year, DOT used about $9 million of maintenance money for the PBM work. This year, they're proposing to use $17 million, so they are expanding. So in summary, DOT is happy with this so far. They hope that the process will make them more accountable to the state and to the taxpayers and improve the conditions of the roads and uh, allow them to do more maintenance, more cost efficiently. From our side, we thought it went fairly well. There were a few issues, but generally they got worked out okay. Um, one thing, and we, we've known this all along, and I think this is probably true in most branches of state government, Central office in Madison and the DOT regional offices don't always talk well to each other and don't understand what each other is doing all the time. Um, some questions obviously are still out there, some concerns. Will this lead to counties competing against each other or against the private sector for this type of work in the future? It could. It could very well lead to that. Um, will the routine maintenance pot of money continue to shrink as DOT throws more work into this competitive bidding process, I think that's very possible as well. Um, we don't know really where this is going, and I don't really think DOT knows either, ultimately, what this will look like in a few years. The last comment I want to make is winter maintenance is the 900-pound gorilla. I really don't believe you're going to see in the near future private companies plowing snow on state roads. I I just don't see how they would do that. It's maybe not impossible, but it's highly unlikely that'll happen anytime soon. Can I answer any questions, or does anybody have any comments or thoughts? Or Supervisor Farley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you mentioned the <coughs> highway department receives about $3 million a year from the state. Is that correct? Do you anticipate that... Uh, amount of revenue continuing with this new program or declining? I think the total will continue to edge up slowly. Mm -hmm. The main reason being we are seeing more and more traffic on 41, and as work continues to occur on the 441 project, that'll expand and will be sort of, through their calculation, will get more routine maintenance money. Um, but that would be probably the only reason. I, I don't see overall statewide maintenance funding will continue to climb. Thank you. Supervisor Keel. From your perspective, for the Port, from your perspective does this, is this what is somewhat contributing to the, the news stories when the budget trial balloons were floated about the, the high DOT wants list and you know floating the ideas of, of roads? I guess the question leading to could some of this go away, you know, because it's too expensive, do you think, or is this all figured in there? I, I think it's all kind of figured in. Maintenance has been a, because it's a public issue, DOT uses it in the public. Obviously, I mean, they're trying to generate interest in what they do and generate support for their funding. Um, honestly, I've been very involved in this from the get-go on committees and such, and I didn't want it in the first place, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm still not sure exactly how it's going to work out and if it'll be to our benefit or not in the future. Um, but definitely the, the maintenance funding is one of the discussions going on right now with the budget. Okay, thanks. Supervisor Hardy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <coughs> So in the bidding process now, um, are you bidding against other counties for these projects, or is this more going through the motions of a bidding process for a job that you're pretty much guaranteed to get? Um, that's a good question, and the answer is somewhere in between. 
we're not to the point yet where we're bidding against other counties mm -hmm. that will come fairly soon there there were several cases in in this first year mostly counties who didn't want to do the work or didn't have time to do the work where another county came into their county and that i can tell you that is fairly unique it happens occasionally but not often i do think it's going to go there eventually so what they're doing now is building data gathering data on cost and what our bids how our bids compared to cost and those types of things but i I do think regular competitive bidding is coming on some of this work. So, so we very well could be uh, bidding up against private companies in the near future. So, that's that's possible. You think it's possible? Okay. Yes. And one one other question: you, you have in your report that the state budgeted an additional fifty million dollars for this routine maintenance or for um, the transition to performance-based maintenance, but only. Nine million of that went to the PBM activities. What, right. Do you know what the other forty-one million dollars was for? Routine maintenance. It, it went to the counties. Oh, we got okay. we got a nice jump. To, just to do most it. counties got a nice bump in their routine maintenance funding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you. <clears throat> Zoning reports and ordinances. Report number one, James E. and Kimberly J. Egan, Town of Amro. Supervisor Egan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of report number one. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A mandatory ordinance number one. I move for the approval of a mandatory ordinance number one. Then moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Marvin Kazabowski, Supervisor I, Egan. I move for the approval of report number two. Second. It's been moved and seconded for report number two. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A mandatory ordinance number two. I move for the approval of mandatory ordinance number two. Then moved and seconded for mandatory ordinance number two. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Report number th three, Richard J. and Violet S. Kiesel. Supervisor Egan. I move for their uh, approval of report number three. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A mandatory ordinance number three. Move for the approval of mandatory ordinance number three. Second. Then move and second it to approve a mandatory ordinance number three. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Report number four, Rogi Real Estate, LLC Jerry Wagner, MPB Builders, Town of Algoma. Supervisor Egan. I move for the approval of report number four. Then move and seconded for report number four. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A mandatory ordinance number four. I move for the approval of mandatory ordinance number four. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Report number five. Claude and Christine Foster. Supervisor Egan. I move for the approval of report number five. Then move and seconded to accept report number five. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A mandatory ordinance number five. I move for the approval of mandatory ordinance number five. Second. Then move and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Report number six. I move for the approval of report number six. Okay, it was Claude and Christine Foster, town of Menasha. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A mandatory ordinance number six. I move for the approval of mandatory ordinance number six. It's been moved and seconded for mandatory ordinance number six. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolutions and ordinances. 109-12-015. Commendation of Melanie Piper. Supervisor Rasmussen. Move for, for approval of resolution Number 109-1-2015. Second. 
been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution commendation of Deborah Walters, Supervisor Rasmussen. I move for resolution number 110-1-2015. Then moved and seconded for resolution 110-12-0-15. I was going to ask that they give a report or, or include something of what they did and how many years of service from now on after this. I had uh, Supervisor Wernke emailed me and would like to uh, said he would like to see that uh, yesterday. And so, But I was going to suggest that at, when I'm done with this here now, that we'll be asking for how many years of service and things that they've done. It is in their, it is in their packet. Pardon? It is in the packet. How many years they've up service? Okay. Okay, I will have it read from now on. Where was I at? Commendation for Deborah Walters, uh, Resolution 110 12 0 15. Is there a, a move and second? Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Resolution number 11, 111, 12, 0, 15, commendation of Mary Jo Turner. Supervisor Rasmussen. Move approval of resolution number 111, 1215. Then move and second. Did all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Disallow claim of Teresa Miller, Supervisor Rasmussen. Move for approval of resolution number 112, 1215. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution 113, 1215. Approve a capital project to add additional parking at Parkview at a cost of 209000 and fund the project proceeds from a 2015 bond issue. S Supervisor Ellis. Move for the, move for the approval of 113-112-1015. Dash and move and second then. Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to amend this resolution to, as uh, Mr. Ornstein talked about earlier, to pay for it out of the uh, Parkview fund balance rather than from a 2015 bond issue. Um, as you alluded to it, it's possible, so I wanted to go ahead and make that amendment. So I apologize. You're right. Okay, but moved and seconded. Any further discussion? We'll vote by our Supervisor Hardy. Could could I have uh, the finance please explain the consequence of this amendment? Leave that much less in the fund balance if we need it to balance the budget. So whether the, it be for next year or a future year. So this amendment is changing it so that it comes out of the fund balance for the yes. county budget, not the... The Parkview Health Center fund balance. Okay, and does, and does the Parkview Health change. Center have this amount of money in their... Yes, plan? they do. Thank you. Supervisor Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And correct me if I'm wrong, Chuck. Isn't there fund balance somewhere in excess of $3 million? Yes, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Supervisor Lautenschlager. Uh, one, one, thank you, Mr. Chair. One of the other things we have to remember, too, is, is Parkview also has the big uh, nurse call light system that's coming out of the fund already. So, I mean, so now this is two big projects coming out of, out of the Parkview fund balance, one, I'm saying. There already is one coming out. Okay. 
Supervisor Farley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, check if I might. Uh, last year during the budget, I believe, we took money out of the, uh, I'll call it their reserve account, if I might, for lack of a better word, to uh, basically buy down their levy. How much was that? So we took a million, it was about four million then last year. We took a million out to buy down the levy? Yes. Okay. Uh, and that is kind of the not unusual to do that. We do that and have been historically for the last few years? Yes, we have. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Eisen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at this time, I am, I am, uh, reading the financial highlights provided by the finance director. This uh, edition was dated November 2014. So I, I would hazard a guess uh, that the uh, amount of money in the uh, Parkview fund has not increased <coughs> greatly since that particular time from this time of the year. Uh, but according to this document, uh, it indicates that there was a net surplus after adjustments of $308,000 in the Parkview Fund. Is that correct, Mr. Finance Director? For the year 2014, yes, that's correct. Okay, that means we're going to take $205,000 out of a fund of 308000 That's going to leave them on a pretty thin skating ice. That, uh, really, I, you're only looking at the one year. The fund balance is a, an accumulation of all the years. Okay. So what, you might be using what is that, that? What is that amount? It's, it might be in that report that you're you're reading from. I I don't recall offhand. It might be seven million, maybe eight million. Well, it's similar to that. It's not exact. Cash and fund balance are not exactly the same. They're pretty close. Okay, $10 million? That, that could be the number. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go. Supervisor Rule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Someone mentioned the call system. I spoke to the chairman of uh, uh, the committee prior to the meeting and was told that that cost would be less than this 200 and some thousand. So even though it's going to come out of the uh, reserves, it relatively a small amount of money. Supervisor Skellinger, you had your light on and off. Did you want to, or did I shut it off inadvertently? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I think it's, I think that, that, that this $209,000 uh, relative to what the Parkview uh, fund balance is at is, is pretty minimal and, uh, and, and that this project ought to be paid out of the, out of the Parkview uh, fund balance. Thank you. Okay. Supervisor Higg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make this amendment simply because of uh, at the end of our budget process, we had uh, one supervisor specifically ask about bond issues going forward and indebtedness. And I think that this would, it's a small portion, but at least it would be a bite out of what we might have to bond for, and we have the money there for it. Uh, I believe that the fund balance for Parkview continues to increase on an annual basis, and uh, I don't know against a guessing game what that might be at the end of this calendar year but i think there are more than sufficient funds in there and i would appreciate uh supporting the amendment thank you okay we'll vote by our little ipad vote for this is for the amendment correct mm -hmm. vote aye if you go along with the amendment vote no if you don't That is passed. Chuck, can you help the clerk later with the wording on how? Sure. Okay. Now back to the original amendment as amended. Oh, okay. Because you're not 
Bonnie. Bonnie. Okay. So what did he say? So it still that passed. The, a, yeah, it changes it to a two-thirds vote versus a three-quarter vote. Okay, so it's it still passed. Was twenty-four was the limit, right? Right, but now this one now is just a two-thirds instead of a three-quarter vote. Okay, now this one is going to be a two-thirds vote rather than a three-quarters vote. So we'll vote again if. And the amendment as amended, for the resolution. So this is 27, right? Susan? That is passed. Resolution number 114-2015, authorize the appropriation of $204,000 to a capital project to replace the 9-11 telephone system and fund this project with a 2015 bond issue. Supervisor Smith. Mr. Chairman, move for the approval of resolution 114-12015. Was there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Okay, seeing no further discussion, we'll vote on our little iPad. Vote aye if you approve. No if you disapprove. Is passed. <coughs> Resolution number 115-12015, transfer $52,000 from the General Contingency Fund to project a, to complete the jail joint sealant repair project. Supervisor Roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move for the acceptance of Resolution number 115-12015. Okay, we'll vote by our little iPad again. Vote aye if you approve. No if you disapprove. Why does this one have two thirds? Because of the dollar amount? Okay, this one needed three fourths, but this one only needs two thirds. Okay. That is passed. <laughs> Resolution number 116-12015, authorize a contract between Winnebago County and S Safety National Insurance Company, Excess Workers' Compensation Program Insurance. Supervisor Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move for approval of resolution number 116-1-2015. Then moved and seconded. Supervisor Norton. Okay, we'll vote by our iPad again. Vote aye if you approve. Mary Beth.
That is passed. Resolution 117-12015, reauthorization of Winnebago County's self-funded workman's compensation program. Supervisor Rasmussen. Thank you. Move for res approval of resolution number 117-1-2015. We'll move and second it. There's no further discussion. We'll vote. Supervisor Norton. That is passed. Supervisor Roble. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move that we adjourn until Tuesday, February 10th, the regular business meeting. Okay, we are, we are adjourned. Supervisor Higgs.